from sunny Winnipeg, from uh, 201 Portage Avenue. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, Portfolio Manager from Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management here at the Tatro Wealth Advisor Group. I'm excited today because for the first time, we're going to be having an actual technical and quantitative expert to talk to us about specific stock patterns, what he's watching for, uh, what the what his basically his technical outlook is for 2020 in the stock market. I'm really thrilled. It's going to be neat. I, I've kind of reviewed some of the material that he's doing today, guys. We're going to be talking about patterns. We're going to be talking about you know relative strength index. We're going to be talking about momentum in stock prices, signals, charts, trends. Uh, we're we're looking at stock charts today, and we're going to be taking a deep look at them. I will bring our guest in right now, uh, folks. Uh, live from not New York, from Toronto. I'm excited and thrilled to be bringing in one of my partners, someone that uh, has been, I've been working with hand in hand for a while here, Javid Mirza, quantitative technical analyst. He's a research specialist from Canaccord Genuity Corp. Javid, welcome and thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me uh, on the show, Rob. Yes, uh, thrilled to have you. Okay, I'm going to share my screen here, Javid. I'm going to take yep. you through some of the slides that you've prepped uh, for us for this call today. Javid, Take us through this one here. This is your rise of the machines chart, the S and P 500 and the V bottom. Yep. Um, this is a well, this is a neat chart, and it's this is a 20 year chart for those of you that are looking at it. Yeah, and actually, do you mind if we go back actually to the yeah, first chart absolutely. because there's something I wanted to discuss, which is please um, pretty uh, important. And no, the the very first uh, slide. First chart. With, yeah, with the the that this one. one. Yeah. So. When we talk about, and the reason is I'm keying off when you talked about secular bull markets. So what a secular bull market is, it's these 20 to 25 year uptrends. You can see those blue arrows. But ultimately what it means is the economic environment for growth is ripe. Okay. And so just so people who are lot, uh, watching, I went to school, uh, UFT, uh, had an undergraduate uh, degree uh, in, in business. So I majored in economics. And it's just telling you that the environment is ripe. Interest rates in this secular bull market are low. Like if I wanted to go out, start a new business, you know, once this pandemic uh, thing is over, you know, you could get a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar loan at like, you know, two, three percent interest rates. So the underlying environment, uh, globalization, trade, I could set up a, 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 a store in Shopify really quickly. And it's just telling you that the underlying secular conditions for growth right now are extremely right and the, the one thing i want to highlight uh, and talk about on this chart is if you just look at that long-term chart what that is and what that represents is human innovation and growth okay so if you look in the 20s we had you know we just started getting off horses onto automobiles 40s 50s we just started getting televisions 2000 we just started getting the internet but the bottom line and the key takeaway and i just want to leave a really positive message for people just because you know what's happened here has been really challenging but humans we adapt we overcome and this looking back Right now, things, of course, are really challenging. But if you step back and you look at these very long term trends, it just tells you that we will survive. So sorry, let's, let's no, go back to the great, other side. Yeah, it's great, because this is the kind of message I always give my viewers. I always remind them to be positive. You know, with my dad last week or a couple of weeks ago, I gave this whole spiel about how we will prevail. Capitalism will prevail because yeah. we are good at creating wealth in North America. Mm -hmm. We're good at creating wealth. There's always a dollar to be spent. It's cheap money right now. So we will create wealth and capitalism will prevail. And I echo your comments. It's almost like you, I set you up for that comment, Javid, but I swear to our viewers, I did not. You said yeah, that no, on you your didn't. own religion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm an incredibly positive guy too. So let's talk about this chart here, the rise of the machines. This is the, the algorithms, the machines that are trading. Yeah. So, and this is what I want to highlight. So the, the top panel there is a very long-term chart. I think it's 20 years of the S&P 500. Exactly. Now, take a look at the bottom panel there. All that is, is, uh, you know, I don't want to get into too much detail, but it's just tell, it, it's a great indicator of when uh, the price patterns have either gotten very oversold, which is when they're around that blue line, the thin blue line at the bottom, or if they're very overbought, which is when they're above that, the red line. But the, the key takeaway and the point is, is Take a look at the, the 2000 to 2002. You can see those blue shaded boxes and where that indicator was. So that was during the tech 
bubble when it burst that was around the lows and then take a look at the financial crisis and what happened there and where those indicators got 0809 yeah 0809 exactly but what the the really important thing and this is why i talk about the rise of the machines and this first happened in 2018 and just so you know in 2018 we had that call out and you know we were advising rob and his entire team and everyone at our firm look it's time to step in and buy because this indicator is at levels that is beyond anything we've seen both in, during the financial crisis sorry go ahead rob no no i just wanted to tell you to thank you for that and not yeah. only you but some other people at can accord but we made uh, 4, trades december 22nd, 23rd, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, yep. we were buying aggressively uh, based on some of these indicators. And mm -hmm. my, my clients, thank you. And obviously, you know, I thank you because we were, you guys were spot on and we were spot on on that call. So good yeah. call on there. And we ended up making a lot of money on that trade. Awesome. So what I would say is here, um, but notice how deep down that indicator got. So the, the key point is that indicator got to levels beyond what we saw in both the financial crisis and the tech bubble. So why would what happened during a span of three to four months take us beyond levels we'd seen in two major corrections in secular bear markets? That doesn't really make sense. And what happened is over the last in March, we got to below those levels as well. So this is a monthly chart, but I actually have weekly data and though that indicator got to levels below what we saw in December, 2018. So what this is telling me, if you step back is within the last two years, we've surpassed levels we've set in the last 20. And this speaks to our point, And you can see that in the bottom bullet that algorithms and machines, they're moving more and more money. And so, Humans, you know, we have, you could say, buy, sell, and hold. But the machines, they're ruthless. They don't care. They're binary. So they either have sell or buy. They're long or they're short. That's exactly. It. And so they were in sell mode from February to March. And so the question I posed to all my readers in, in the weekly note that we put out uh, in March, I said, look, we think there's going to be a V bottom. Why do we think so? Well, up till now, the machines have been on zero, which is sell. What happens when they flip to one, which is buy, right? And so that's why we've had this V bottom and that was our call is because the machines have been turned back on to buy. Yeah, really interesting stuff here. The uh, they, They're a much bigger portion than they ever were in our lives and humans cannot move the market that quick, that no. fast. And I know because my clients, you know, they don't make decisions in the middle of the day at, at 1 27 PM to sell everything. Like that's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a process that happens over time. So I, I, I had a strong feeling it was an, an aggressive machine move. Uh, I'll take you to the next chart here. Reminder folks, I'm here with Javed Mirza, a technical analyst, quantitative uh, researcher here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. Javed, this is a four year cycle history. You've, you've spoken about this four year cycle before. Please tell our viewers about it. Yeah, so within this, uh, and I'll use my arm here. So within this longer term 20 to 25 year cycle that we've talked about, you have these uh, three to five year cycles that occur pretty much uh, like clockwork. And it's other people have, uh, you know, there's been economic studies done on this and it's an inventory cycle. But the key takeaway is typically every three to five years. And those are those uh, horizontal lines that we've highlighted there. Uh, is a, sorry, vertical lines, is uh, a three to five year major market low. So uh, from our work, uh, 2011 was a major four year cycle low and so was 2015 and then most recently 2018. Now this pandemic in our view, uh, and you can see those green lines, that's when there's been aberrations where things have been knocked off course. And the first green line there, that was the 1987 stock market crash. and as we go through and visit, you know, as we update this deck, we're going to have another green line here highlighting the COVID-19 pandemic, which in our view is a black swan event and not a bigger economic shift. Yeah, I think you have a slide on this here next, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah black swan event right here, the yeah. average four year cycle. Um, yeah. I'll let you I'll let you take you take us through this. Yeah, so this is uh, a great example of what we we're discussing. So 
If you take a look at the slide, the, the blue dotted line around the middle is the average track of all these four-year cycles. So all we've done is we've taken all the individual cycles, aggregated them, and we've come up with an average. And the red line was the 2018 cycle. So the, you can see where it says year zero. That was December 24th. So from that point, you can see how the red line pretty closely tracked that dotted line right around the middle. And then you can see the sharp drop off we've had over the last two months. But what you can see is the market is slowly trying to get and fight its way back uh, on track. So, you know, this has obviously caused a lot of uh, disruption across the board. We're going to have to look at our models and see what this does. But our view is that, you know, as long as we remain above that four year, 200 week moving average, and as long as RSI remains above 50, we think that this has been a black swan event. Uh, if you don't know what a black swan is, uh, there's a great book out by Nassim Taleb where he just talks about these low probability unknown uh, unknowns uh, that can happen. And uh, this, in our view, was definitely uh, one of them. Yeah, it's like me making the NHL. Yes, yes, that, that would, would be a black, be a black swan, swan event. Swan. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a flock of black swans, I think. Um, the S&P target here for 2020, you have it on your chart, so I do yep. want to address it. That's yep. a bit of an elephant in the room. 3,700 yep. for for the end of this year. Yeah, so That's let me... So really Yeah, so we put that target out at the start of the year. You can see where, you see where it says year one when we were, tar when we were tracking that uh, average four-year cycle very closely. Now, all we did was extrapolate where we were at that point in time, extrapolate where we would be at the end of year two, and then we just did some math and, and found out where we were currently in terms of the S&P 500, which I think was around 3,100, 3,200, and we just extrapolated out uh, to the end of the year, which was 3,700. Now, we could have changed that, but you know, you've worked with me for a while. I'm always all about, you know, being transparent and you know, integrity is extremely important to me. And so we just left it there. We just wanted to highlight, look, that was our target. That's the work we did. Let's see where we go from there. And if there needs to be a critical assessment, but our view is the way the market's drawn and come back here is I still think we could print new uh, all time highs later this summer if the market continues to stabilize. So I think, I don't think we're going to get to 3,700, but I do think, you know, we can come to around 34, 3,500. Oh, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, I hope you're right. Boy, do I hope you're right. Um, and I, I do like that about you. Like in, in a way, this COVID thing, when it comes to technical analysis of charts, mm -hmm. I mean, you kind of get a free pass because I, I know you shouldn't get a free pass because this is your job, but I mean, th this doesn't exist on any charts ever, a kind of black swan event like COVID, like we, like we've seen in the last two months. Mm -hmm. So there, there's no technical analyst ever that could have charted for something like that. So no, that's a it, more macro, macro side of things. So I'm going to give you a free pass on that one. Well, so if you recall in uh, January, February, we were actually talking about an intermediate term correction. And we were actually warning clients that there was an intermediate term correction coming. Now, that being said, the intermediate term correction we were looking for was 8 to 10%. Yeah. So your run-of-the-mill standard pullback from new highs nobody was looking for 35 percent yeah as my dad calls it a healthy correction as my yeah. dad <laughs> i went on bnn on january i think it was 28th or something like that yeah. not too long after i got that note and we had done our own charting at my end here and my dad and i were talking stocks every single day and i went on bnn and i said exactly what you said i said i, I think we're we're pulling equities off the table here we think yeah. markets are overvalued right now we think there could be a 10% correction. Obviously I didn't expect a 35 or 40%. No, no, one, no one did. Yeah. But uh, I, I would agree with you. And I think we were on the same page in January as well. And yep, we actually did do some, we did some profit taking in our portfolios on that.